Hi guys, welcome back to the garage. As you can probably tell by the copious amount of steam coming out of my mouth, it's absolutely freezing here. So things are a bit slow to be honest. I was intending to bring you some CB550 stuff, but the tank which is on the bench is causing me big problems, so those videos are to come. Anyway, today's video I decided in 2022 I'd better get my finger out and get stuck back into this bantam that I'm meant to be doing. Um, it has progressed very little since you saw part one. There have been a few side videos about minor parts and today is another side video about the carburetor uh, because the main frame and things are in the process of being sorted out at the minute. So today it's the carb, or at least what I can manage to do with the carb. Hopefully the next one will be on the frame and start to build it up. And then it will be assembling bits onto it to try and find out what I've got and what's missing. So today it's the Bantam Concentric. So let's go and have a look. Welcome back. And today we're going to be looking at the Bantam side build. And in particular, the carburetor, which is uh, an AMAL, a concentric. And sadly, like lots of projects, it's all lying in bits in a box. So first of all, I'm going to have to go through it, do a dry build to make sure everything's there, and also to assess what's going to be needed to rebuild the thing properly, and in fact, whether it's going to be usable. So that's what we're going to be doing today. The car body is pretty clean. The threads appear okay where the air filter mounts. The flange is pretty good, although they distort, so we need to get a straight edge. And just double check if there's anything obviously bad with that. And that looks pretty good. Although I will get a piece of glass and some sandpaper and just make sure that is completely flat. The O-ring that's in the box is absolutely shot rotten, so that's no use. There's no obvious signs of scoring or other damage inside the main bore, which is also of major importance. I'll check these threads in a minute, but that looks okay. The tickler works. So the other thing to check then is all the drillings are clear, but I'll do that, I think, when I've got the jet bodies and things in, just to make sure that everything passes through cleanly. So the body looks okay. The next important piece is the slide. Now these score really badly. I've had a few of these and they can be really bad. They can rattle about, end up with massive scoring down the side. This one's pretty good. There's some minor scuff marks, but there's absolutely nothing you can feel with your fingernail. If you wanted to be really picky, you just get a new one, but Cost-wise, I really don't think it's worth it with this one, so that's going to be reused. The float, I'll check that in some liquid to make sure it does float. The pin's free, which is good, although I'll have to clean it, it's a bit scruddy. The needle is the old, old plastic type, which will be junked. So I'll be getting a new needle with the gasket set, assuming everything else shows signs of promise. The jet stack looks okay. All the holes are clear. I'll check the jet sizes against what it says in the workshop manual. And I will also check the carb stamping, which should be marked for the model, but I can't see it. Anyway, we'll come back to that later. It should be stamped for the Mark model. There's no obvious signs of any damage or anything in the jets. Obviously they wear, it's hard to tell because the holes are so small, but again, I don't intend changing them. Everything looks okay. So they go together like that. We've got the carb top, which is all right. 
the float bowl, which has obviously been cleaned. You've got a seat for your needle. These surfaces can warp again in relation to the car body where it joins. There is a gasket, but which is there, but again, that will be get replaced with a new one when we rebuild the carb. Again, this will be put on some abrasive paper on a sheet of glass to make sure that it is flat. Uh, that's a fairly quick process. I've got a couple of string, springs, I should say, strings. There's the cable adjusters. That one's in a decent enough condition. That one's quite rusty, so I'd have to do something with that. That'll need cleaning up. That one's not bad. You've got your mixture screw and your throttle stop, which have little O-rings, which have to be replaced, which again will come in the kit, the rebuild kit available from AML at a very small amount of money. You've got your banjo plastic inlet, which uh, these go brittle and crack, but this, this one seems okay, it's slightly discolored, but that's not here nor there. And then there's a small top hat fuel filter. We've got four screws, non-matching, which are, need a really good clean, probably a replay if you're going to do it properly. Uh, that's for the carb top and the float bowl. Got your choke slide, which again these wear the edges round off and they rattle about, and that looks in pretty good nick. And finally, our needle, which is quite discoloured because it's been sitting for a long time, but there's no way without the use of a macro lens that we'd be able to see the end of it. But the end of it gets ridged along here. And again, this one looks pretty good. Discoloured, but pretty good. Uh, I'll check the price of a new needle. I don't imagine they're that expensive. Um, and obviously, if they're not that expensive, I'll just get a new one. And then also in the box, we have this tiny, tiny little jet. Which I'm going to have to get my better specs on to find out if that hole is clear. But it looks clear and I'll blow through it to make sure... And then we've got various gaskets. Right, I've been through the box again because we are missing something. And that's the clip which fits in the needle slots, uh, which doesn't appear to be anywhere in the box. So the rebuild is going to have to wait now until I get a gasket set which hopefully will include all the O-rings and then I'm going to have to order a clip as well. So this little part of the rebuild will be continued when we get those parts. Right, before I order the parts, I thought I'd better check the carb number, which is on there, 626, and it looks like 13. So I should be able to identify it off that and check that it is in fact a sport carb as the uh, bike is of sport. Uh, be interesting to find out if it's been changed at any time. So we shall see. Right, I've tried the macro. See if I can get this in focus for you. Now this is the float needle valve. It's the old plastic type. It's not actually that worn. You see the sides of the uh, tip are fairly clean. Uh, but they're not compatible with modern fuels. So I have to fit a black tipped replacement in metal, which uh, thankfully is very cheap. So this will be removed. And whilst I've got the macro lens on, we shall have a quick look at the uh, throttle stop and mixture screws which uh, that's the O-rings I was talking about before. Can you get that in focus? Yeah, the O-rings I was talking about before. 
they need to be replaced. And in our jet stack, on jets, there should be numbers. But I'm going to have to refocus and bring you back to that. Right, so refocused. You can probably just make out, let me just point to it, there's a number there which says 190, which gives us that jet size. And then at the other end, we'll have to refocus again. And then at the other end, at the top here, it says 105. So I can then check those against the uh, workshop manual and make absolutely sure that it's been jetted correctly because who knows what life this bike's led and we'll have to double check. And finally the needle. Now because my eyesight's not that great I originally thought this was merely badly marked uh, with uh, surface corrosion or damage marking gum whatever you want to call it and I didn't think it was actually badly pockmarked in the metal itself however with the advantage of the macro lens and a really good look the surface is in fact degraded so I don't think it would last very long once it was back in use because it, it should be a, a, an even polished surface and when you look at it microscopically under the well, not microscopically, but look at it very closely under the macro lens, you can see pitting in the surface. So it definitely needs a new needle. So that goes on the shopping list. I checked numbers on the carb, and it is a genuine sports carb, which is uh, very good news indeed. So on that basis, I then ordered some new bits and I found that Amal who sell genuine parts and also give me extremely good service I've also found a very very good uh, provide a, a rebuild kit which costs £38 and in it you get a replacement float a new fuel filter of your essential o-rings, your gaskets, a new needle and associated clip, float bowl washers, a new needle valve, a new mixture screw valve and the two tiny o-rings, one for there and one for the throttle stop. In addition to which you can then choose which jet sizes you require your particular carburetor and all that to rebuild the carb as I say was £38 which I think is an absolute bargain and on that point before we actually get around to starting the rebuild when I was looking at the first part of the video when I was editing it I noticed that the slide didn't come across very well it looked like it was in poor condition so I've given it a bit of a polish just so you can see that the marks that were on it were gum, varnish, various old bits of crud and actually it is in very very good condition and therefore that's why I decided the car was worth rebuilding. So I just thought I'd show you that before we move on. Just Right it's flange checking time, we've got some abrasive paper on some glass so we know it's fairly straight. This is the flange I want to check so we're just going to give it a very gentle run round which will show up high and low spots. You can see already there is a difference on that flange. So. a bit more and now we're starting to get telltale far wider it's a little bit more a bit more lubrication there we 
we go. We're getting there, aren't we? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We're not far off of that, I don't think. So we're shiny across there. Shiny on the edge. Shiny across there. Slightly depressed in the centre. Still there and there because it's still slightly dark, but that's not important because that's on the inside of the rubber seal. So the important bit is that part around the outside edge, around the edge of the seal, and that's pretty damn good. So one final squirt. Yeah, that's pretty flat. Good. Now we've got to do the same with the float ball because as we know it too can distort causing leaks so a little bit more lubrication yeah that's pretty good pretty shiny all over a little bit there Pretty much even all the way across as you can see. Excellent. So we need to clean those off and uh, start looking at blowing through the carb. Right, so the next uh, thing to do, now we know all our fountains is flat, is to blow through our various orifices. <laughs> Everything's clean. Right. So the first thing to go in is our little tiny pilot jet, which you have to hand is going to go in here in this threaded hole. Excuse my fingers. I must put my other specs on because I can barely see the thing. One second. Slightly better. And then our jet stack in next. This is the old one. And now the jet sizes were incorrect for this carburetor fitted to a a sport. The main jet was considerably bigger and I'm not entirely sure why um, but I've ordered the standard jets and that's what's going to go on now. So, take it on the screw because it's already loose. And our new ones screw in. And they need to be nipped up. Here we go. That's not the right spanner, is it? Yes, it is. Just make sure they're tight. bag of bits we have a new needle no not needle idle circuit screw 
which needs a little rubber o-ring seating on it which is very small and incredibly tight I'm just going to turn it off for a second because I'm working at a peculiar angle so as I don't stand in front of the camera and I need to keep everything in this area so let me just get this rubber seal on and I'll come back to you it's on and I've done the throttle stop one as well uh, they were really quite tight, awkward uh, virtually impossible to do without decent fingernails I would have thought anyway they're on, that's all that matters so that one goes in there Wind it all the way down and then go out half a turn, one turn, one and a half turns just as a starting point. Fine tuning will be done when it's running. The throttle will stop again, it's not really that important where that goes for the minute, so we'll just get it well started on its threads, and that'll do. So it's the float ball next. And there we have it. So we have a new float needle valve. We have a new float, which is not one of the AML stay up type, it's just a bog standard one. So in our box of bits, somewhere, we have the old float. And the old dirty pivot, which obviously can't go in like that. And I forgot to clean it before we started the video. So bear with me one second, I'll go and clean it up. Quick rub with a bit of Scotch Bright, and that's that sorted. So it's going to go through there like that. That's going to sit in there like that. And the needle valve, float needle valve, has to be suspended on that piece of plastic. And in she goes. So we're going to need a gasket. Right, the fuel inlet has a, a washer. So there's a washer and the bolt. And then that's a bit grubby, so that needs cleaning. And then there's a, a steel washer. Let me just go and let me just clean that. Right, it's a little bit discoloured, but uh, that's better. There's a witness mark where the wash has been. The bit on the bottom of the carb is also slightly not as clean as I would like, so let's have a quick go at that as well. Don't know how I missed that. Right, that's better. The alloy is slightly, uh, slightly discoloured, but it's clean enough. So we've got our bolt, fibre washer, metal washer, uh, plastic intake, fuel filter, and then our fibre washer over there. So that should all go back together like that, in theory. Now, I'm not tightening up yet because uh, I don't know where this is going to go in relation to the pipe, so I could just sit like that for the minute. So back to the main car body. Where I remember now that I haven't, I put all these in and I haven't cleaned that flange up, which is really rather stupid of me. Let's get a little bit of cleaner on there. Really, for, luckily, it's not uh, it's not that dirty. I don't know. And now we can put the. Uh, Float ball back on. Which brings us back up to the top end of our bowl again with a nice shiny flange and our gasket. Now, call me old fashioned, but I'm not overly keen on gasket goo, particularly on things like carbs, so let me just go and get some grease.
there's probably lots of people screaming now, saying there's lots of modern compounds that are adequate for this. I'm not overly keen on the... Yeah, that's not very good either, is it? Not very keen on gaskety goos. So, we're doing it the old-fashioned way. Bit of grease around the flange. Grease on our gasket. Line up our holes. And attach it to our body. Which must be like so. Yes. There we are. Not quite. Hmm. There we are. No, no, not. Not a very positive location at all. Anyway, let's get our screws. Wrong screw for this, but in mind, a screwdriver, I should say. Assume that's okay. I expected it to locate slightly more securely than that, but hey ho. Right, so that leaves us with our top end. Now the cables are not ready yet, so our choke slide, I have discovered looking at the parts book, is missing a metal sleeve. We should sit in there which I haven't got, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to go and order that now, which is typical of these sorts of builds when things come in boxes. Uh, so there's not much point continuing this until we have that, but so that's where we're up to. That can go back in the box. Our bits can go back in the bag. And when our sleeve arrives, we could finish off our build.